laparoscopic management of the hydrated cyst disease you know echinococcus granulosis that is a cystic echinococcus it is one of the disease and echinococcus multilocularis that creates the alveolar echinococcus echinococcus granulosis this is the shape and the life cycle already you know and as a surgeon you don't need to recollect again but this is the life cycle how the hydrate cyst develops and intermediate host then definitive host then it adult worm then it forms the egg and then once the patient will ingest it you might have forgotten it also in the physiology <laughs> the Uh, pathology you must have read it this is pericyst this is the middle laminated membrane and this is the germinal layer and there will be a lot of daughter cyst unless until it is infected generally germinal layers are free and it can be easily taken out layers of the hydrated cyst is pericystic or adventitia endocyst or laminated layer and then germinal layer the germinal layer produces clear fluid which attain a pressure up to 300 mm of water and keeping the endocyst in intimate contact with the pericyst and the endocyst receives its substances always from the pericyst so this is fibrous capsule this doesn't need to remove you can leave it attached to the liver then you have fibrous capsules para this is a parasitic origin fibrous capsules then you have a daughter cyst and then germinal layer this germinal layer and daughter cyst should must be removed otherwise there may be chances of recurrence a lot of scoliosis will be there that has to be taken care generally routine laboratory tests do not show a specific result and in patient with rupture of the cyst in biliary tree marked and transient elevation of the cholestatic enzyme level occurs often in association with the hyper amylase level and eosinophilia it can as many as 60% imaging studies are plain radiograph ultrasound examination ct scanning and mri treatment medical treatment to any any albendazole or benzimidazolic drugs like mevendazole or albendazole are well tolerated but they show different efficacy praziquintel it belongs to isoquinoline group and has been widely used in the cystosomiasis and it has been shown to be a most active and rapid solicidal compared to the albendazole but it has poor effect on germinal layer so it is choice for prophylaxis in pre and post operative period in order to prevent secondary implantation of the spilled daughter cyst or proto scoliosis surgery was the only treatment available before the introduction of the anti this anti helminthic drug and it is considered as the first choice of treatment for echinococcus but is associated with considerable morbidity and recurrence in 2 to 25% of the cases now we will see here in this patient there is a hydrated cyst on the left lower lobe and it is inferior margin of so according to base ball diamond concept this will be the port position there will be one port in the umbilicus one left hand and the right hand and one liver retractor this is falciform ligament here is the diaphragm this is left lobe of the liver this is stomach and here is the cyst now one instrument will retract the liver up and then you will find out the cyst before touching and before doing anything to the cyst you should take the nasogas you should take the this uh, 
um, um, small sponge and you should put a lot of hypertonic saline in the sponge and you should put it all around the cyst. The idea is that if any fluid is spilled then this hypertonic saline will kill it. And you can spill a lot of hypertonic saline around this sponge, gauze piece. That is a boundary for protection. After that you should take a spinal needle and percutaneously you should puncture over the cyst. And after puncturing you will do the negative balancing. You should take 10 ml of the fluid out and replace it by the 5 ml hypertonic saline. Again ten, take 10 ml out and again still by 5 ml hypertonic saline. So ideally you are replacing the saline with the cystic fluid. And that should continue up to 15 minutes to 20 minutes. So that all the scoliosis will killed out. Some people they use the formalin and some people they use betadine also. But generally hypertonic saline is the best because there is, it is safe, there is no chemical reaction and you can do it. Of course before starting the procedure all the anesthetic checkup, all the, these things has to be done. Sorry, what happened? So all the pre-operative investigation has to be done and full course of albendazole should be given. Some time to prevent the patient from the anaphylactic shock, high dose of steroid also some people they give and other antihistaminic also can be administered. That is in the different practice but at least two to three months it has to be administered. Different people have different practice, but at least long, low dose, high dose, it is required. And then this is the negative balancing. Once you have done and you have replaced the entire cystic fluid with the hypertonic saline, now you will start cutting the capsule and then you can use harmonic or hook and you can cut the capsule there. We need a good quality endo bag. You cannot expect to use the gloves. You should use a commercially available endo bag and then all the germinal layer should be transferred immediately into the endo bag. And most of the time, unless until it is infected, this germinal layer comes relatively straightforward. It will come easily and you will transfer into the endo bag. Care should be taken that any spillage should be avoided. And that's why there is a metallic ring on the endo bag. This metallic ring is very useful because it will self retain there. Gloves cannot be held like that. Because in the gloves one or two instruments will be required to holding. But it is self retaining. And then you can transfer all the germinal layer. After that you can open the endo bag and then slowly you can pull it out. Then Again, you have to use a suction irrigation and ideally 10 mm suction should be used. Some of the Indian, especially one of our very famous surgeon, Dr. Palani Velu, who has introduced his own, he has made his own long trocard that is called as hydrated cyst trocard. And you know in this trocard there is no valve. So idea is that directly that trocard can be punctured over the cyst. And directly in the trocard you can attach one suction. So the advantage is that any way you do, but the idea is all the daughter cyst also should be sucked out. And that's why 10 mm suction is very useful. Again here before sucking, you should instill the hypertonic saline and wait for a few minutes. And after that you should suck it out so that all the parasites, they will be killed and there is no chances of re-implantation. Sometime, sometime if you will find any of the, sorry, again same problem happens. Sometime if you will find any of the cyst is left in those situations, you may have to individually hold it 
you can put your telescope completely inside the cyst and if any of them has left individually you can hold it one by one and you can pick it up you should also find out any of the fistula with the biliary tree if there is any communication with the hepatic biliary channel that also may need to get fulgurated or sometimes suturing because one of the complication is the communication with the biliary tree but here these are the some, all the fluid and here couple of daughter cyst is there which is held by this grasper and taken out and then you will easily again examine thoroughly put again hypertonic saline again wait for couple of minute and again wash it then you can do marsupialization margins of the cyst can be burned and then one suction can be introduced omentoplasty is plus minus some people are there in favor of omentoplasty some people they don't do it now this is the uh, another case in this here is also this is a 156 year old female with a hydrated cyst and this is the port position same way one port in the umbilicus one port mid clavicular line left and right and this is the falciform ligament and this is left lobe of the anterior surface of the liver anterior surface of the liver and here posterior surface of the liver is fine here is the stomach and this is the anterior surface now little adhesion is also there in those situations sometime you have to remove the falciform ligament because it is extending either side of the falciform ligament so little is on the left and little is on the right this is the cyst and this is on the right this is falciform ligament here is entire cyst and this is also cyst coming to the right and left so in those situation you can just dissect the falciform ligament with the tripolar or with the harmonic or this is tripolar and then this is the entire cystic wall and after that you have to put a saline do you know sometime it is psychological how much it will protect the spillage we don't know but always a putting a gauze piece will be appreciated even in the dermoid cyst even in the endometrioma and then you can put a lot of hypertonic saline and then you will cut it and take the germinal layer and all the daughter cyst out so especially if these cysts are located here it is just a puncture with the varus needle or a spinal needle and hypertonic saline injection so if it is located on the surfaces of the liver like anterior surface inferior lobe then it is easy but sometime if the cyst which is located on the sub diaphragmatic area or in the middle deep substance of the liver then sometime lobectomy is also required and deep dissection with the endo gi linear stapler is required so here this is hook and this hook is opening it slowly and you can hook look and cook and slowly you can separate it so ergonomically in different situation here it is the tripolar which is cutting the and doing deroofing this is a tripolar which is doing deroofing of the cystic anterior wall and it is cooking and cutting the entire this is deroofing and then you will go inside and this is germinal layer now this is the endo bag and that endo bag has to be kept and then germinal layer you have to transfer inside the endo bag and then again you have to enter inside and thorough irrigation repeated suction 
again irrigation repeated suction with the hypertonic saline has to be done in order to kill all the daughter cyst and to just eliminate the entire capsule has to be left in removal of the capsule is little bleeding unnecessarily you will get the bleeding and it is not necessary because reoccurrence doesn't happen due to the retained physiological capsule so marsupialization you can do the margins you can burn in open surgery marsupialization is done by running suture inverting but in laparoscopy if you are burning the margins with the bipolar we say that also as a marsupialization and again this is now clear again repeated hypertonic saline and again suction will be done Now again the de-roofing is continued. This is tripolar, so there is a cutting blade in between. Harmonic is equally good, like I showed also you can use. Simple bipolar also can be used. Some people they use hook as well. So this is now the remaining part of the interior surface of the cystic capsule is removed. then you can put in the again same endo bag this is little more wall Now this is cut. So now the endo bag is taken out, mouth of the endo bag will be exteriorized and then with the ovum forcep you can pick it one and endo bag will act as a wound protector and slowly if you will enlarge the incision little bit it can be taken that way also but better is to open the mouth and then take it out. So this way with the ovum forcep you will crush it and you will remove it. This is the endo bag how it comes out. Now again you will take one gauze piece and that it can be pulled out. Now omentoplasty. You can take a bite over the omentum. And then you can push it in and fix it over the surface. Here with the capsule you can fix it over. Momentum is a very good policeman and if it goes it will obliterate the space and it will do the good result. It will not allow any fluid also to remain there. It will absorb that also and it will occlude the dead space. Now again thorough irrigation and suction, so accidentally if something has gone and then a drain can be introduced.
again this is the another case here you have the little bit betadine together with the soft with the normal saline and then a sponge all around and here is the cystic wall which you can cut and you can remove it so if you see most of the cyst which is removed here those are on the surfaces and ergonomically port position you have to decide you can see both the angles here are 60 degree port position you have to decide according to baseball diamond concept that where it is located and according to that then four ports are generally used one for traction and two other for dissection Yes, sometimes germinal layers are broken. Like here you can see it won't come, because especially if it is infected cyst. Then with a gauze piece you have to rub to take all those layers out. So de-roofing is required, otherwise little bit it is not necessary to complete de-roofing. Little bit opening is required to pull the germinal layer out without breaking it. And in the endo bag, you can put all the germinal layers. Now these are the daughter cysts which you have to suck. And in some time, in those cases where you have a lot of remnant, you need to completely rub it and suck it out. One of the criticism is, as already of any laparoscopy, is contamination. Here again, this is one cystic layer that has to be punctured. In the same case, or other case, same case. Same case. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
disease or procedure related mortality is 0.5 percent and careful patient selection is mandatory to achieve successful result especially location of the cyst and ergonomically to decide that you can approach or not is very important to prevent the complication so here also patient selection is the paramount for the success of hydrated cyst surgery if you have a drain then the drain should be continued and then again sometime stent is helpful here 